Good evening. Welcome to Politic a Podcast. Tonight we have Mike Schultz, uh, our new Speaker of the House. Hey, hey, how, how about that? Yeah, as of November. Representative Schultz. I mean, it, it's been fantastic. Uh, so so what yeah. what do you see as the as the key things that you've been proud of since we had a good session? We had a great session. For conservative values, I think it was one of the best sessions we've had. Uh, you look at what we did with DEI. Uh, you look at what we did with bathroom, uh, the bathroom bill and the privacy uh, stuff that Representative Berkland uh, ran. Uh, you look at what we did with energy. Uh, you look at what we did with the State Sovereignty Act. All these things, we'll talk more about them in details, but for a conservative in the state of Utah, you should be really happy with what happened this session yeah. because we yeah. pushed back and we moved this state to the right. Yeah, so so let's let's talk about DEI to begin with. Yeah, what what what, what moved that? Well, you know, before the session, you saw we got in a little bit of a piss and match with the universities, or a big right. one, right? Right. Over DEI, and uh, we had to honestly, uh, because what was going on and in, in, is still going on inside these universities is not right. Okay, um, it. When, when we started talking about DEI and when I came out strong and took a, a strong stance on the DEI, you wouldn't believe all the university professors that I had call me and say, this is unbelievable what's happening. Uh, it is segregation. These are their words, not mine, but it is segregation happening all over again. And these people under the name of DEI is trying to not produce equal opportunity, but produce equal outcomes. And that's wrong. That's not what we believe in as a nation, and that's not what we believe in as a state. So it was important for us to stand up, push back, and not have DEI any longer. And so we did that this session. That bill's going to go into effect, and 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 we're backing away from that as a state. Now, now some people are saying, I, I've heard from some of the university people that people inside are saying, hey, you know, we're just going to change the name and pretty much do what we're doing. Uh, that won't end well for those universities that want to do that. Uh, I am committed to this. We are committed to this as a legislature. If they want to just change the name and they want to continue trying to push equal up or, or equal outcomes uh, under a different name of DEI, uh, we will push back and it will not end well for those universities that try to do that. It didn't end well for the universities when they tried to push back on us hard before the session. Uh, and uh, we were able to get the DEI bill passed with flying colors because the citizens of this state have had enough. They would like the universities to more reflect the values of Utah, not those of California and so many other uh, uh, states. Uh, and so we need to get back to the basics uh, inside uh, the education system and higher ed. And let's talk about teaching uh, uh, actual academics and not try to fight culture wars inside our higher ed. You know. Well, and you know, some some people have said to me, they, you, you know, what? Why are you why are you fighting a culture war? And it and it's kind of like, well, we kind of just want to end it, right? <laughs> it's not that we want to fight anything. We just want to get back to teaching the basics. Let's just get back to math, science, economic development, things that mean the most to our kids, right? Uh, Let's not go down this road of all the other stuff. Let the political sides do that if that's what they want to do. These are our higher ed institutions. Their core mission is to teach our kids and to teach their students facts. Let's just leave it at that. Get back to the academics. Enough of the other stuff. Let's just get back to, to, to the core mission teaching the kids and the the students academic yeah a lot of, a lot of people don't realize that that bill actually simply says you got to be fair to everybody yes that, right? that's it treat equal opportunity for everybody doesn't matter what color your skin mm -hmm. is it doesn't matter race should not matter you i again i'm coming back to university uh professors that called me uh when i took a hard stand on this and said Representative Schultz or Speaker Schultz at the time, this is unbelievable what's happening inside this university. And I'm not going to name the names, but it was pretty much all of them. And they said, it is literally segregation happening all over again. Those are their words. And so to be able to push back on this, for the bill to go into effect fairly quickly here, and to roll back these programs, 
I'm excited about it. And if the universities don't do it, 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 it we're coming after them and they will do it. I'm confident of that. We, we have a new commissioner of higher ed now, yes. uh, yeah, new board, new board. Uh, I, I was, I was really excited when they, when they announced that, uh, y yeah. you know, there, there needs to be political neutrality. There needs to be freedom of speech. There yeah. needs to be freedom of thought on the universities. And I, I, I think they're going to move in a great direction. Look, we've got a lot to be proud of, of our universities in the state of Utah. Let's focus on that. Let's get back to the basics. Let's get back to being, and let's lead the nation on with our higher ed universities in creating the best students, giving the best outcomes, and get away from all this other stuff and just get back to the basics, teaching the kids and the students. Yeah. That, it's that simple. It yeah. really is that simple. It's common sense. That's where we need to go. So, so let's, let's talk about the energy stuff. Yeah. Uh, fantastic things that were going on this session. Right? Well, you know, let's talk about the negatives and then we'll talk about the okay. positives. The negatives, the federal government is coming after us to try to force us down the same road as California, Oregon, Washington, and so many of these other states that are giving up their reliable, dispatchable energy. Uh, in Utah, that happened to be coal. And in Utah, we burn the cleanest coal in the world comes right out of utah our coal power our coal power plants are some of the cleanest burning power plants uh, as far as coal goes in the world not just the nation in the world by the way it's our only reliable dispatchable energy if uh, we let the federal government push us around which they are trying to do you will see energy costs in this state rise overnight overnight 30 to 40 percent. These aren't my words. This is coming straight from Rocky Mountain Power. Uh, we came together. Now let's talk about the positives. Okay. We came together with Rocky Mountain Power, which you know, and we created a one of a, its kind bill uh, that uh, will allow Utah to remain and keep our reliable, dispatchable power, push back against the federal government, keep Utah is the number one lowest energy rates in the nation and not force these high costs on its citizens. And, and it's not even just a high cost. In 2032, they're trying to shut it down completely, our energy down completely, and they don't have a plan on what they're going to replace it with. You know, it'd be something different if they, if they said, okay, we're going to permit these nuclear plants they're to, not. to open up. They're not doing that. They won't let us run natural gas pipelines across the federal land so that we can switch to natural gas. They've got our hands tied. It's Again, I come back to common sense. Where is the common sense? It's missing. And it's, they're trying to force us down the same road as California went down and that we had blackouts and brownouts in California. They're forcing us down the same road. We will not let it happen here in the state of Utah. By the way, I got a call from Rocky Mountain Power the other day asking, uh, asking me to go and talk to some of these other states uh, the, the, uh, about the bill that we passed this year. Uh, so, so they were actually pleased with the. They were pleased with it. It was good. Yeah, yeah. So we want to move ourselves away from California, Oregon, and Washington, right? In, in uh, uh, Rocky Mountain Power, Pacific Corp, uh, Utah is one of six states. Wyoming, Idaho, Utah, Oregon, Washington, California. Three of those states sound a lot alike. The other three, Oregon, Washington, California, they sound alike, and they don't match with Utah values. We want to separate ourselves. That's what this bill does. Those states want to go down that road and not have reliable, dispatchable energy and let them suffer because of it. That's fine. We'll let them go down that road. But Utah's not going down that road. That's what that bill did. I'm proud of that bill. I know you are as well. Yeah. And uh, we pushed back hard. That's good. Hey, we're going to take a break. Yes. Okay. And we'll be right back. Hey Siri, how do I get to the state capitol? John, the fastest way to get to the capitol is to make a lot of empty promises, to get help from special interest groups and endorsements from politicians. You will also need to buy a better suit. That's not going to work for me, Siri. You need to find another way. John, listen to me. If you're going to win your race, you will need to play the political game. You also need to use more hairspray and buy a golden retriever. 
Also, a new phone case would be nice. It's enough of this. John, 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 are you there? Did you just leave me on the road? Fine. Keep your principles, John. My name's John Johnson. I'm not running to be part of a system, and I don't owe anyone special favors. I'm running to listen to and work for you. I'm running to get results. Welcome back to Politicket. Uh, we've got Mike Schultz here. Uh, Mike, right yeah. right before the break, we started talking about the Sovereignty Act. Yeah. Can, can you explain that to, yes. to people? So first in the nation, Utah is leading the nation on this. We know we have a bunch of unconstitutional mandates coming at us from the federal government, right? I mean, they and it's not coming from Congress. Congress is broken. They're not doing anything, right? Uh, they're coming at us from executive orders or uh, through unelected bureaucrats, through rulemaking, okay? So we're done here in the state of Utah. When we get these unconstitutional mandates come at us, we're not just going to file a lawsuit or whatever. We're, we're against it and fight it through court. We're going to specifically tell our state agencies that they can't enforce these unconstitutional federal mandates on the citizens of this state. So so the law that was passed is yeah. is simply a framework where, where we the work framework. this, right? And yep. so... So what happens is if if they if if we deem I, I if guess, our legislative attorneys deem that this uh, uh, the, this is uncon these this new rule or executive order or uh, is unconstitutional, then uh, the the uh, the speaker and the president pull the members of the body and we bring ourselves into a special session and take a vote. And if it passes, then it tells our agencies they cannot they can't enforce. The, the this new rule coming out. So rather than us suing the federal yep. government, they're going to have to sue. They're us. going to have to sue us. Yes, because we're not going to enforce it. And that's you know a lot of these unconstitutional mandates they rely on the states to enforce it. And unfortunately, in the past we have. Well, we're done. We're not doing it anymore. Um, we're going to push back. Uh, we have to. The Tenth Amendment of our Constitution means something. States' rights mean something. We're about to find out exactly what that means, and I'm proud of it. Well, you, you know, there's a lot of a lot of things that affect us. The federal lands issues, for yes. instance. There's a lot of that. You look at the road closures that's happening on our federal lands right now. Uh, look, you and I, we're both getting older. Our population is getting older. We can't go walk and hike these millions and millions of acres. We rely on these roads and these the recreation opportunities that it provides us. You can't just go close them down in an effort to keep the public out, mainly keep Utahns out. These are Utah, should be Utah lands. They're inside our state. Our Enabling Act should have turned those lands over to us. Again, it's time for us to stand up and fight and say, we're taking this back. We're not going to allow you to continue to force these closures on us and these crazy management plans. On top of that, they're talking about another monument inside our walls, inside our borders of our state of Utah, another huge monument. Every Democrat president uh, since uh, 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 Clinton. Uh, well, he just flew over the state. He didn't even come here. He, he flew over the state and declared it. And did the photo op in Arizona with, and depicted, yeah, for Grand Staircase Escalante. It, it's sad. The Democrat Party and the Democrat presidents have been using Utah as a political ATM to pay back their environmental donors, we're done. We're going to stand up. We're going to push back. We're not going to allow it to happen anymore. We're going to fight to get control of our lands. Whether it's management or ownership, whatever it is, we're going to do our best to take it over and push back and say no more. Well, you know, when I was in graduate school down in Texas, uh, they, they have this permanent university fund that actually comes out of the state lands, right? It comes out of the mineral, the rich minerals and stuff coming off the state lands, they they have so much money for their universities yes. that doesn't come from from income taxes or property Not taxes. Just universities, or, their public education systems are funded off of those. Uh, our income tax and our other taxes have to fund, and property taxes have to fund our education system in Utah because we don't have that that ability. It's not fair to the citizens of this state uh, for what's happened for decades and decades, really a century. 
So, so, so taxes. We yeah. cut taxes again. This is the fourth year in a row. The only state that I'm aware of to cut taxes four years in a row, while Arizona, California, and so many of these other states are dealing with uh, uh, negative budgets and having to figure out how to deal with negative budgets. We didn't have a lot of money this year, as you know, but we went in and cut $160, $170 million in other areas, and it freed up the ability for us to to do a, another tax cut this year, fourth year in a row. And, you know, you keep adding up these tax cuts, it's about a 10% reduction in uh, the the income tax. So where do you want to see that go in the future now? Oh, what, I, what, what, yeah. what, what taxes do you want to work on? Well, a couple things. So on the income tax side of things, uh, we've, uh, you know, we went from 5% down to about 4.5%. Right, that's almost a ten percent. It is about a ten percent reduction. I'd like to see us get into the threes over the next couple of years. Uh, I think it's possible. Let's see what happens. Let's try that. Sales tax on food. The voters are going to have the opportunity to make that decision uh, this November. I hope they do. That's another two hundred million dollars in tax cuts on removing the state's portion of the sales tax on food. If you add uh, the, that two hundred million dollars to the one point three billion dollars in income taxes we've cut over the last four years, that's over an a billion over a billion and a half dollars per year on tax cuts for the citizens of the state. Let's make it bigger. Let's keep it going. So, so uh, another piece is the uh, the tax on Social Security income. Yeah. We've we've already reduced that. What? Yeah. So uh, you know, before uh, about three years ago, anybody any any uh, income over I think thirty thousand something thirty thousand uh, dollars jointly was taxed with your social in, uh, social security income we raised that to seventy five thousand dollars so those making less than seventy five thousand dollars don't pay uh, income on so or don't pay taxes on their social security income so do you see that going or yeah, is that no, something we're gonna work I th- on I th- as well I think that's an area where we keep we keep doing it yes I think we do I think we keep doing that so what are what what are some of your other priorities now uh, going forward? Well, I think the biggest thing facing our nation, or, sorry, our state, is uh, the 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 unconstitutional mandates and the mandates coming at us from the federal government. The federal government literally is trying to change Utah and other red states to make it more like make them more like the blue states because we're not moving in that direction. In fact, the last year or two, we've moved the opposite way. As you know, we've moved more to the right and said, no, we're not going to continue down the path of some of these other states. Well, the federal government, mainly the Biden administration, is trying to make us become more like these liberal states. I think that's my number one biggest thing is pushing back on the federal government and saying, no, enough's enough. Uh, and, uh, you know, and something else too, we have got to do something about what's going on the border. Uh, they are starting, the, the, the illegal immigrants are starting to make their way into Utah. And uh, it is going to have a huge impact. When I went, I went to the border uh, this in February, uh, uh, the Texas border, and saw how the Texas uh, 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 state had shut down the border and stopped the illegal border crossings at Eagle Pass. I couldn't have been more proud of Texas and what they did and the stand they took against the federal government to shut it down. We need to join with Texas. We want Texas to join with us in pushing back on. The federal government. I'd love to see a coalition of eight to ten states stand up, say we're done. Uh, we want the Tenth Amendment means something, and let's let's push back. Oh, there's so many things that we can talk about, yeah. but uh, we're we're about out of time. Uh, just in closing, what what final words do you want to uh, give to the people of Utah? Well, I, I appreciate it. Thank you for this opportunity. And I love watching your podcast. And it's an honor for me to, to, to be here with you. But I think the biggest and most important thing is for the citizens of the state to realize that we're at a crossroads. Uh, the decisions we make today will have a lasting impact, not on just us, but our kids and our grandkids. And if we allow the federal government to continue doing what it's doing on the smaller states like Utah, uh, we will become just like some of these other states. 
we're done with it. We're going to stand up. We're going to push back. And it's working. We've been successful so far. Uh, we right now have more lawsuits filed against the federal government than any other time in our state's history. And we're just the beginning. Hold on. Very good. Thank you, uh, yeah. Mike Schultz. Thank you, guys. We'll see you guys next week.